Hi, this is Daryl Chesser. Wanted to welcome you to 2017. Many of you are looking for a new start or a complete wiping away of, of 2016. 2016 was the, uh, but God's faithfulness. He kept us, he got us through it. Here we are. And so many things are, uh, are changing. So many things are about to begin. Uh, a new administration coming in, which is always interesting to see where that's gonna go. But to see an old administration go away is, um, quite frankly, it's a relief. You know, you had eight years, just like Mr. Bush before you, you had eight years, you got it done what you could do. You made your mistakes. You did your good stuff, whatever. Now go, let's get somebody else. We got 320 million people in this country and there's more than three or four that can be in that office. So we praise God for new blood. Now I have no idea, uh, if Mr. Trump's going to be good or bad, I don't know. I'm just grateful that we're going to find out some interesting stuff in the next few years. Our hope is in God. Our hope is in the eternal, in the things that man can't see, which is the Holy Spirit, prayer, faith in God, our creator, a good father, a good heavenly father, watching over us and this nation and the people of all over the world to try to do good and to keep us from, well, quite frankly, from having another mommy and daddy called government. Uh, God didn't raise us up to be children of government. He raised us up to be children of God, his children, children who treat each other well, Ch children who love their families, who bring their families up, children who are grateful and children who are giving. So anyway, God bless all of you in this new year, 2017. And may we be here at the same time next year, 2018, January 3rd, should the Lord tarry, worshiping God and praising him for the abundance, for the health and wholeness, for the revelation of his word and of the Christ, for great things for the nation, great things for our families, great things for our communities, great testimonies of God's goodness to those who are less fortunate, to those who are sick and to those who are dying. And great, great news that millions and billions of people around the world are being, uh, their eyes are being opened to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's our testimony for 2017. No matter what comes our way, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. I believe that's 1 John 4, 4. Sounds good. Uh, but that's the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ in us, who was sent to help us, to assist us, to uh, correct us, to instruct us, to work the works of God in and through us. It is the Father's works that the Holy Spirit works through us. My good works only count for a little bit. But the good works of the Father, Jesus did. He said, the works that I do are not my own. They are from my Father. He works through me to you. That's the same way it works with us. So anyway, today I just wanted to talk a little bit about a couple of things, get in and get out and say, here's this new year, a year of opportunity. Um, I'm one of those odd ducks. I really, I actually believe the Bible. <laughs> I always have. And it's been weird. And I know a lot of people do. But I mean, it's just like, no, I'm, I actually believe it. I mean, I believe that a fish swallowed a man and then threw him up. I believe that, that people walked on water. I believe that gold was found in a fish's mouth. I believe people got healed. I believe people got raised from the dead. I believe it still happens. I believe for 2000 years that men have been raised from death to life, from darkness to light because of Jesus Christ and faith in his name. I believe it. I absolutely believe it. But I wanted to talk a little bit about the children of Israel and some things, a reminder. Moses is talking to the children of Israel right before they go across the Jordan into the promised land. They've been out in the wilderness now 
they've been out of Egypt about 40 years, but they've been wandering, just kind of wandering for 38 years after they kind of, uh, yeah, they, they kind of rebuffed God when he brought them up here the first time to go into the land of Israel or the promised land. And so they've been wandering. And so Moses is now here. He's not going to go into the promised land. And he is uh, talking to the children of Israel and he's giving them a reminder of what they said, of what God said, of what is going on and what's at stake. And I wanted to read some of that to you today. This is in a uh, passage out of Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verses 32 through 39. I think right now I'm, I'm reading out of what's called the CEB, the Common English Bible. No idea. I, I read different versions all the time. It's kind of fun. But here we go. In all history, a couple of things here. Number one, a little bit of that and a little bit of this. Some coffee. All right. <clears throat> back to Deuteronomy. In all history, going back to the time when God created man upon the earth, search from one end of the heavens to the other to see if you can find anything like this. An entire nation heard the voice of God speaking to it from fire as you did and lived. They heard God's voice on that mountain when they came to Mount Sinai. They heard the voice of God come out of that crack. It was the mountain was on fire. It's like lightning and thunder. And then like trumpets, the voice of God comes out. It terrified them. I mean, this was a nation of slaves. They've just come out. They've only been out of, of slavery just a, a, a few weeks by that time. <clears throat> and uh, they've seen amazing things. They've seen amazing things. But when this thing happens, they call them to the mountain and say, don't come near the mountain. Don't touch the mountain, not you or anything living. You'll die if you do. But come because I'm going to talk to you today so that you'll know I'm here. That God's saying, I want you to know I'm real. I'm here. So they, they gathered that day and holy cow, woo, they were terrified. So they heard the voice of God coming out of the fire on the top of that mountain. Let's continue. Where else will you ever find another example of God removing a nation from slavery by sending terrible plagues, mighty miracles, war, and terror? Yet that is exactly what the Lord your God did for you in Egypt right before your very eyes. You were a witness of the, the plagues. You were a witness of all of the destruction, and yet you were exempt in the middle of that, God protected in Goshen, the Israelites. Let's go on. How did these things, uh, he did these things so you would realize that Jehovah is God and that there is no one else like him. He let you hear his voice instructing you from heaven and he let you see his great pillar of fire upon the earth. He even, you even heard his words from the center of the fire and it was because he loves your ancestors. Ancestors. That was Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Abraham, who God gave the gospel to, who God gave the promise to, who God cut the covenant with. What, that was all of the nations of the earth will be blessed through your seed, Abraham. And of course, he was pointing down the road to the Christ. But this was the gospel message. All the nations and all of the families of the earth will be blessed through you, your seed. This was the promise. This was the covenant that God swore and walked in blood with Abraham. In Genesis, you can read that. And so God swore by two immutable things. Number one, he can't lie. I believe uh, Romans tells us this in Romans chapter 4. Maybe it's Hebrews 6. One of these two. You'll see it at the bottom of the screen here. <laughs> um, it, it was impossible for God to lie because, number one, God can't lie. If he says something, it happens. Can't lie. Then number two, he swore an oath. He didn't have to swear an oath, but he literally put himself under an oath. Now, when you take an oath, it's like a contract. There's pluses and minuses. God restricted himself voluntarily with Abraham under curses and blessings. If you keep this, blessings. If you don't keep this, curses. In today's vernacular, it would be, here's what I supply if you do your part. And if you don't do your part, here are the penalties. I take that away or I re-pull that supply back. 
So the God of heaven put himself under the threat of curse for us by walking through that blood and swearing that oath to Abraham. That's stunning. All right, let's go on. And it was because he loves your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and he chose to bless their descendants, the whole world through Jesus Christ, that he personally brought you out of Egypt with a great display of power. He drove away other nations greater by far than you and gave you their land as an inheritance as it is today. This is in the news right now. The inheritance, 3,500 years, 3,500 years. The inheritance of Israel goes back. Those lands were given to them and possessed by them 3,500 years ago. And there was not one Palestinian alive at that time. No such thing as a Palestinian state. It was just there. God gave it to them. And now in the news, we hear that the UN decides that the Jews have no relevant claim or Christianity for that matter to Jerusalem or Israel, really. They have no claim. They have no, nothing in it. I'm going, well, see, anyway, that's a whole nother story. So this is your wonderful thought for the day. Jehovah is God, both in heaven and down here upon the earth. And there is no other God than him. Now, this is the very God that brought them back into the land in 1948. Israel came back into this land uh, after being out of the land about 2,000 years and spread all over the earth uh, to tribes, the lost tribes of Israel are everywhere. And um, <clears throat> this Aliyah, or the coming back to Jerusalem, coming back to Israel from all of these other places began after that, coming out of Europe, coming out of Russia, coming out from the nations of the world, coming to be back in Jerusalem. All of this prophetic in the Bible, this Aliyah, or the return. And so God brought them back into the land to confirm this, prophet, this prophecy, not because of Israel, not because of the, that they were worthy and righteous and they, they were you know, holy and circumspect. No, it had nothing to do with that. It had to do with the promise he made to Abraham. It had to do to make, to make the promise of, to the descendants or to the descendant, to the one, the chosen one, Christ Jesus, that all of the world would be blessed through him. So it is because God loved the whole world that he sent Christ Jesus. It is because God loved Abraham and that the promise, the oath that he made, that he blessed Israel and that he blessed Christ Jesus. And today it is because God so loved the world that through Jesus Christ, the seed of Abraham, that the whole world would be blessed through, the seed of Abraham, now whosoever will, every nation, tribe, tongue, language, everyone, whosoever will believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, will be saved and become heirs with Abraham. That's amazing stuff. So, the gospel was the good news that Abraham heard back then. All, this, all the world and all the families of the earth will be blessed through your seed. That was the good news. The good news is that the whole world, not just a certain race of people, not just a specific line of people, all of the chosen and decisions like Esau have I hated, Jacob have I loved, that's a choice. And then you, you see many other choices in before the cross where it was like, wow, that's pretty severe and pretty like, wow. But God said, so that you will know it is by my choice, not by those people's good actions or deeds, not by those people's good, holy hearts, but by my choice, he said, my choice to get me to, to get the whole world to my choice, which is Christ Jesus, his son. That's the whole thing in the Bible, the entire story. That's the whole purpose is God choosing up until the cross. And at that moment, when Jesus came up out of that grave, it was no longer God choosing a specific line, a chosen people, a specific uh, uh, thing. 
it was now it re, it went to the promise which was who so ever will wow wow no longer did you have to be born in a certain race or born in a certain uh, religion or born in a certain family. No longer did you have to conform to a certain mode of this or that. Now it was to, I don't care where you come from. If you will see Jesus Christ and him crucified and him resurrected, believe that and cry out and say, Jesus Christ, I believe your Lord, you will be saved and you will be brought into the kingdom of God. You will be brought into the inheritance and the promise that Abraham was given by God, that the whole world can be blessed and you and your family saved. Galatians 3.39 says, now if we, or 3.29, I'm sorry, if we belong to Christ, then indeed are we Abraham's seed and descendant, we're heirs, according to the promise that he was given. I'm part of the world that was blessed, the whole world and my family. We were blessed because we believe Jesus Christ. And that's because Abraham believed God. You go read that in Romans chapter four, uh, and you're gonna see Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness. He believed God even when he was 100 years old, his body is good as dead as far as uh, uh, procreating, sexually procreating and, and having a baby. And his wife was barren her entire life, never had a baby, couldn't have a baby. Now she's about 80, 75, 80. And so both of their bodies as good as dead and plus barren before that with no hope. But it says in Romans chapter four that Abraham, in spite of that, in, in, in spite of it, hoped because he knew that the God who promised who had said to him through your seed, I will bless the world. So Abraham believed and he continued to believe God's word and continue to move forward. And guess what? At a hundred years old, he and Sarah had that baby, the cho choice, the promise. And that was the picture of what was coming down the road. Jesus Christ, the very Son of God, the Messiah of Israel, a human who bled and died for us for that very purpose. His body was formed in Mary's womb to die for us on that tree, to be our sacrifice, the lamb slain from the foundation of the world as John the Baptist cried out when Jesus, he first saw Jesus. He said, behold, the lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world. This is what that was about, the promised land. This is what all of the Bible is about. This is what Israel was. A choice, a choice, a choice. God chose them. And the world can't stand it. The world system can't stand it. The darkness can't stand anybody having God's approval. It's that simple. Self-righteousness. Man believes our wisdom, our diplomacy, our intellect, our inventiveness, our force. We'll build a tower to the sky, to the heavens, and God then will recognize us that we are a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> I got news for you. You got to come by God's choice or you can't come. There's only one way, the door and the life and the way, Jesus Christ. So let me finish this up. <laughs> I do that because you know I'm going to talk longer. Or if you don't, if this is your first episode with me, you're going to find out. I like to talk. We may not have seen the fire or heard the voice of God, you and I, from the mountain, and heard the thunder and seen the fire and all of the things that we read about in Genesis, <clears throat> there on Mount Sinai, Mount Horeb, and some references. But here's where we have come in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 18 through 24. And this is out of the Living Bible. Let me read this to you. You have not come to stand face to face with terror, flaming fire, gloom, darkness, and a terrible storm as the Israelites did at Mount Sinai when God gave them his laws. 
for there was an awesome trumpet blast and a voice with a message so terrible that the people begged God to stop speaking to them. They staggered back under God's command that even if an animal touched the mountain, it must die. Moses himself was so frightened that the sight, at the sight that he shook with terrible fear. Duh, I would too. But here we go. But we, you and me, who have put our faith in Christ, we have come right up into Mount Zion, not Mount Sinai, but Mount Zion, Z-I-O-N, to the city of the living God, to the heavenly Jerusalem, and to the gathering of countless happy angels, and to the church composed of all those registered in heaven, the believer in Christ Jesus, the redeemed by Christ Jesus, those who have accepted his, his uh, sacrifice and his blood as their righteousness and their redemption and their salvation and to the spirits of the redeemed in heaven already made perfect and to Jesus himself who has bought us, brought us his wonderful new agreement, his new covenant and to the sprinkled blood which graciously forgives us instead of crying out for vengeance as the blood of Abel. Abel was the first man killed in human history, according to the scriptures. His brother killed him because of, well, to be quite honest, the sacrifice. Abel copied God and sacrificed an animal, a lamb, and brought that to God. Cain was a, a farmer or something. Anyway, he grew, did good work, and grew a crop, hard work, and brought the crop to him. And he was not accepted. And God said, that's okay, dude. You're, that's, blood's the only thing that's going to work here. Now, bring that and you'll be accepted too. It's not that I don't like you, but the only thing that can cover your, your sin, the sin that we were all born in, is blood. The life of an innocent person. And there is no human ever born that's innocent. You're born in sin. There was only one person ever that was born of a woman who was born without sin, and that was Jesus Christ. And it is his blood that cries out, not for vengeance, as Abel's did against his brother Cain, but for forgiveness, but for mercy and for grace. He wants you to be saved today. So I ask you to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be brought into this wonderful new argument, uh, agreement, I'm sorry, wonderful new agreement between God our Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. That's, that's the new covenant. The new covenant is not between you and God or me and God. The new covenant is between God, the eternal creator, and His Son, Jesus Christ, the resurrected and eternal Messiah. Two, these two, sealed by the blood of, of Christ Jesus. God literally walked in the blood of his own son uh, in, a, in a figurative sense uh, thousands of years earlier with Abraham when he went between the, the, two, the halves of the animals and walked through the blood. He knew he would be wading through Christ's, his own, son, his own son's blood uh, in 3,000 years in the future. 4,000 at that. You know, somewhere in there. 4,000 years in the future on that cross. No, not that far. 2,000 years from Abraham to there. That's pretty stunning. So the covenant was ratified by Jesus' blood, and it's between the Father and us. And as it said on that Christmas night that we celebrate, peace on earth, goodwill to men. Corinthians tells us that he has made peace. He has reconciled himself, God has reconciled himself to us through the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. Now my admonition and my call to you is now reconcile yourself to him through faith in Jesus Christ. Praise God. Now that's peace. There is agreement and forgiveness and salvation and eternal life to anyone who will believe and receive his good news by faith. This is awesome stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. Indeed it is. 
I just wanted to uh, to bring that to you and then also I want to start off the new year with a little bit of communion some of you may not do this some of you may some of you may only do it at church and you think well oh man I'm not a like registered cleric or doctor or pastor can I do this communion yeah you can the Bible's not written to pastors and prophets and evangelists and popes and priests and lawyers and theologians the Bible was written to you. It was given to slaves at the beginning, the Torah, the common people. It was written for the common people. And the gospel was given to fishermen and tax collectors and, well, quite, quite frankly, hookers and some other stuff, you know, sinners. Boom. You and me. That's who it was given to. The scholars, the theologians, the doctors, the lawyers of that age who were skilled and hardworking and wise and knew every little crack, crack and crevice of, of the word, of the law. But those guys, they didn't even recognize the living word standing in front of them. Jesus Christ, when they saw him. Their study, their expertise, it just messed the word up. It took it out of the hands of the people and made them a middleman. Sound familiar? The government? A middleman always wants his cut for not much work. You got to come to me. I'm the gatekeeper. Well, I got news for you. There is no gatekeeper on this earth except one. That's the Holy Spirit. When your faith is in Christ Jesus, it's the Holy Spirit who is the gatekeeper, the revealer. He is the one who teaches. He is the one that corrects. He is the one that instructs and comforts. He is the one that works through us to do good. So today I wanted to come to the communion, the first of the year. And tell you, the gospel, the Bible, is written to you. Read it. Read it. And let God's Holy Spirit talk to you. Just give me a verse a day. It could be a chapter a day. It could be a verse for a week where you talk about it every day. You, you mention it. You write it down. You think about it through the day. Let God work in you. The Holy Spirit will start to speak to you. Now, <clears throat> On the night Jesus was betrayed before the cross, he got bread at dinner, and I'm going to use this today, and he lifted it up and he was talking to the disciples, and he said, this bread represents my body, and this body is going to be broken for you. Broken, battered, beaten, whipped, pierced, bruised and nailed to a cross. Crowns of thorn jammed on your head. Blood. The body broken and beaten and striped for us. He said, this body is my body in the new covenant, which was broken for you, for your healing. By his stripes you were healed. For your finances, for your uh, provision, for your protection, for your mind, for your heart, he said, for the brokenhearted, for those, for whatever it is. Today, we lift this up as we take this communion. Your body, your mind, your, your every part of you on this earth, that is what this is for. This is the body of Jesus Christ. This is a symbol. And I do not believe it turns into something magical in my mouth. But this is a symbol in, in obedience to the Father. As Jesus did himself, he broke this bread and he took it and said to the whole world, angels and demons, I believe that body of Christ is food indeed. That the children of Israel on the first Passover, that that lamb that they roasted, who they had uh, uh, taken the blood of that lamb and put it on the doorpost of their house. They went inside and they ate on this lamb. And the Bible tells us that the next day, they walked out of Israel wealthy, not one feeble one among them, healthy and strong, walked out of hundreds of years of captivity and slavery, and they marched out of there whole and wealthy. They ate the body of the lamb, the roasted or sacrificed, the burnt offering, that cooked lamb. So today we believe that the lamb of God the Lamb of God, Christ Jesus, the bread of heaven come down for us that as we eat this today, we're going to be strengthened 
and healed and whole and, and revelation and knowledge come to us by the Holy Spirit. So we offer this today and thank you, Father, for the body bruised and battered and beaten. We take it today. Praise God. Praise God for his goodness. Amen. Healed and whole. We've taken that today. Now, Jesus then took the cup. Got me a little juice and a little cup. He took the cup and he said, this cup is my uh, blood in the new covenant. It is his blood in the new covenant. A new arrangement, a new agreement between God and what was coming as prophesied in the prophetics of the, of the Old Testament. This blood was shed for us. Hebrews tells us that without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission or removal or destruction of sin. The gospel is bloody. If someone tries to peach, preach you a gospel that's not bloody, it's not the gospel. We, we revel in this humiliation of Christ and say, because he did what he did, I identify with him today. I identify with that and say, I believe him. I believe that was the son of God crucified, that he shed his blood for me. And we honor him today for that humiliation because that humiliation of a brief moment turned around to be the exaltation of the Lord and Savior exalted to the highest place. So we drink this today and say, thank you, Father, that this blood, as you said all through the Old Testament, in the Torah, if you're a Jewish person, you know this to be true. He said, the blood, the life is in the blood. The life is in the blood. And so we drink the blood of Christ Jesus, symbolically. We drink the blood of Jesus Christ and believe that his life is now my life. Lachaim to life. Praise God. You are recovering now. You are recovering now. You are recovering now. We've obeyed the instruction in the New Testament. Paul's and Jesus's and, and, the, and the word that tells us to take this communion and believe that when we take this, we're eating and drinking health and wholeness and strength and wisdom and we are confirming the Lord's death till he comes. So thank you very much for being with me today. And I want to close out with just a short prayer and then I'll let you go. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you for Jesus, that you sent him to die for all of us because you loved us. Not because we were worthy, but because you're good, because you loved us. We are your children and you, your desire is that all men come to know your son, Jesus Christ. So that is our prayer today to start 2017. Send labors into the harvest. Open the eyes of people around the world and every culture and every tongue and tribe and language everywhere. Send your labors and let the gospel be shined uh, in us and through us every day. Christ, 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 Christ Jesus. Jesus is Lord. And we thank you for this, Father. Now bless these people that are watching and hearing this, bless them, fill them with your hope and your joy, heal their bodies, heal their minds, heal their families, restore them, and let this year begin, begin to snowball into such a year of incredible blessing and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost that they'll just shake their head most of the year going, I, 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 if I hadn't seen it, I would never have believed this. My life has turned. God's good. Thanks for watching and uh, hope to see you soon. So if I'm in Christ and he sees Christ when he's looking at me, then he's pleased. We see the culture of the kingdom is actually actually the fruit of the Spirit. It is nothing that I have done, 
but God has done it all. So receive good news today. It is only from the Word of God that faith comes. And I keep hearing his voice saying, Jan, I got this. So I'm here to tell you he's got it. This is where a different kind of grace enters in. It's the grace that says, I know you are, and I'm going to bless you anyway. From all of us at Sea Life Ministries. Happy New Year!